Lame Truth here, the Godfather himself, bringing you another video. I just want to read this to you right off the bat here. Infinity Ward appears to be adding a bundle to MW2 soon that will change a lot of the game's music to be MW209 music. The bundle is paid. These music tracks were free in Black Ops Cold War. Yeah. And we're going to get right on into the Battlefield 1 gameplay. So, <laughs> guys, uh... Just, just that, that should set the tone for this entire video. This is kind of why I, I've been yelling and screaming and, and, and bitching and moaning for the past four years is because I saw what they did with MW 2019. I, I try to tell people it's just going to get worse unless you speak up, unless you get kind of angry. It's going to get worse. And now we're here. We can't really go one week without some new controversy popping up. It, lately, it's been like we can't go one day without some new controversy popping up. In fact, I may as well cover the most recent controversy right now. X Defiant Alerts, which is sort of like X Defiant's version of Charlie Intel or Modern Warzone, reports on X Defiant News, you know? Unofficial account related to X Defiant, but I digress. Uh, they got blocked by Call of Duty and they made a post about it. <laughs> I don't know, to block, like, the news account? It's odd. It's very odd. The Gaming Definition also tweeted in and said, they know their days are numbered, right below that. And then he got, like, Twitter banned for that. He, he got put in Twitter jail. He, he posted recently, like, I don't know why I was put in Twitter jail for this. People on here say way worse stuff constantly, consistently on Twitter. I mean, it's Twitter, you know? <laughs> and I, I, I just chimed in and said, like, I, I think... I, I think the official Call of Duty account probably reported this, which is why action was taken, because they play favorites, you know? We're here, though, now. We're here. Uh, constant controversies. Constant bullshit. It doesn't just end at the fact that they're being scumbags. I've covered them being scumbags for the past month and a half. But they continue. They continue to release broken update after broken update. The devs. People will say, excuse them. I say they're just as guilty. And... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They don't talk about it. So I simply have to infer. And if someone wants to correct me that works behind the scenes, I am all ears, man. My DMs are open. Please clarify if I'm in the wrong here. But I just don't think these devs are talented. And I don't think they give a shit. And that's been like the initial reason I started my YouTube career kind of back up four years ago. It's it's devolved or evolved, I guess, if you were to look at it either way, into me covering the, the company's controversies and the company's bullshit. But, but the main reason I started, I mean, if you really want to go way back, I started making Call of Duty content because I liked the game and I wanted to show people how to get better at it. And I wanted to show strategies and, and talk about cool classes and talk about the gameplay depth. But now there is no gameplay depth. The only depth is how deep your pocketbook goes in regards to spending money on this awful franchise. Tell me when I'm telling lies. Tell me. I'm waiting. I got a pen and paper here. I'm, I'm ready to write them down when I'm telling lies. Because I'm not. The paper's blank. Let, let's get into just what they've messed up. And I'm going to just um, take Ace's video here verbatim. And I'm also going to go through the comments. And this is going to be a bit odd. But like, go check out exclusive Ace's channel. Uh, I, hopefully he won't mind me using his content here just for a few seconds. Uh, if he does, you know, I'll take the video down, re-upload it or something. But I, I don't think he's going to care. But go check out his channel for this. I mean, he's like the uh, one of the best COD news guys, him and Drifter. And I'll let you see what he has to say after a brief word from this video sponsor. And I'm, I'm actually doing this commentary on this desk right now, Flex Spot. Today's video is sponsored by Flexispot and their E7 desk. This is a standing desk. You can also use it in a seated position or really anything in between. And man, it is rock solid. I'll get to that in just a second, but this thing is super easy to assemble. I did it by myself. And then once I got everything set up, I got a nice, clean, just simple setup here but you can load this desk up it's got a 355 pound weight capacity it's got a usb port on the power controller and it's got memory functions so you can lock in several different desired heights so i like to sit at around 29 inches and then when i'm standing about 40 inches or so just with the push of one button, I can switch between them. And look, guys, if you have back pain or maybe, you know, your legs fall asleep during the day, if you're sitting too long, a standing desk is what you need. You can switch on the fly like it's nothing. And really, it's just better for your health overall to be mixing up sitting and standing, in my humble opinion. Did I mention how stable this thing is? Look at the water as I'm typing. 
It doesn't move, man. This is rock solid. And that's got to be the most important thing when choosing a height adjustable desk, I think. And with an adjustable height between 24.4 inches to 50 inches, it doesn't matter how tall or short you are, you can use this desk, no problem. Flexispa also offers a lot of accessories, including monitor arms and this nifty little storage drawer, which I absolutely love as someone who tends to clutter up the top of his desk with a bunch of junk. Man, this thing's a godsend. I, I love it. So guys, check out the link in the video description and get your own Flexispa desk. They have several different models. This is the best desk I have ever used, bar none. 20 years running now, I've been using desks. This is absolutely the best one. So check out my link in the video description. And just remember, you have a 30-day risk-free return policy, free shipping, and a 10-year warranty. Pick yourself up one today. You will not be disappointed. This is with the standard UAV. It now works in real time like an advanced UAV would. However, we're not getting the directional arrow indicators. But in some ways, it's actually a bit more powerful than advanced UAV because you do get that elevation data. Just to summarize there, they broke UAVs. The thing that, that's that been in Call of Duty since Call of Duty 4, 15, 16 years ago now, they managed to break UAVs. Suppressors, integrated suppressors, still don't work right, by the way. The firing range still doesn't work right. Go watch that entire video by Ace to see everything he covered, but it's more than just what he covered. The comment section on that video does a better job of testing these updates, play testing these updates before they come out, because, well, I mean, they're out, but they do a better job of play testing the updates than the people that are assigned to play test them are doing. If they even have anyone at all. And I, I don't think they fucking do. <sighs> this video is going to get more and more controversial as it goes, by the way. So stick with me. I I'm just getting started. If you think this is bad, like, check out the comments here. L let's just immediately cut and get to the comments. Again, these are from the video I just showed you where Ace is going over the bugs. This is just his comment section. The firing range visual bug that puts a floating bullet right in your line of sight. I've had that bug since launch. There is also a bug with using melee with a throwing knife. I kind of love that UAV bug. Matches have been a lot more aggressive and fast paced now that everybody just knows where everyone's at. There's a teleporting glitch on DMZ. You can now get out of any multiplayer map after the update. Uh, it's crazy that at this stage in the game, integrated suppressors are not working properly. The firing range doesn't work properly yet. I gave up on COD a while ago. That bug in DMZ with the insured weapons has been really bothering me. Etc. 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 Packet burst, double action triggers messed up on P890s. Oh, just kids. Ah. What is this? Am I in the Twilight Zone? I mean, it just keeps going. You can go to the official video, check out all the issues. I mean, it's not just... Not just that, though. We have Reddit threads talking about this, and this really opened my eyes. I try to keep up with the game despite not playing it for you guys, because I want to be well-informed, right? There's this as well from Reddit, Packet Burst. This is just a Reddit thread talking about how Packet Burst has made its way into Modern Warfare Roman numeral 2. Whenever Vanguard was out, it suffered from Packet Burst constantly. And I realized finally what they're doing with people like agreeing with this here. After Season 3, someone said, like, Packet Burst has just gotten way worse. The servers have degraded in quality. And I've realized what they're doing. It's, they're taking the good servers because they're so fucking cheap, despite making billions of dollars every year. They're so cheap. They will take servers away from, I guess, lesser played modes, or in this case, just the multiplayer in general. Vanguard was not a success by any stretch of the imagination. From the get-go... They gave it the worst servers imaginable. And I can like sit here and blame Vanguard for a lot of things. I, I don't actually think I can blame them for the packet burst. I don't think that's on them for once. I don't think Sledgehammer was the, was the I guess, issue there. I, in a lot of ways, I don't think they were the issue with the matchmaking. And the fact that party matchmaking never really worked. And the fact that a lot of stuff with matchmaking never really worked. I think Activision truthfully gave them the most dog shit servers to work with because they're cheap assholes. Tell me when I'm telling lies. If you think that's not the case with Modern Warfare 2, as player numbers drop, as more people drop the multiplayer component just to go to Warzone, I guess, and play a free-to-play mode of nothing else with their friends, maybe they're putting their server load towards Diablo 4 as well. They had that little graphic in Modern Warfare 2 that just said, hey, 
Are you sick of playing Modern Warfare 2? Won't you buy a Diablo 4 here? It's way better. I'm sure it's decent. I'm sure it's a good game, but I'm personally not going to bother with it. I'll wait on Path of Exile 2. I don't want to support this company at all. And if that means missing out on, a, on Diablo 4 or whatever, that's fine. I will miss out on it. I'm cool. I got other games to play, man. I still, got, I still haven't played Doom 2016. I got it on Steam here, ready to like load up. I, I need to play it because I need to get something... In my system, that gets me excited for FPS games again. I'm, I'm just FPSed out. Call of Duty has literally killed my love for the franchise, guys. Just to kind of close this out, there's, there's so many cheaters as well. There's so many cheaters that during an actual tournament, someone got banned for cheating, but I don't even know how that worked. But just recently, some CDL tournament thing happened and like a team got disqualified because one of the participants got caught cheating i don't know if he brought like a usb drive with with questionable files maybe he had jenna jameson.mp4 on that little flash drive and it's actually like a aimbot or something i, I don't know dude i don't know i don't know anymore there there are so many cheaters so many people getting out of this is cheating there's a, a whole subsection of content creators that simply aim to out cheaters. As someone who has never used a video game cheat in my life, I, I don't even like to use cheats in old school Grand Theft Auto. Remember like Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City and stuff? You could just use the cheats and get the tanks? I am like doing that. I like to be challenged when I play video games. I like to actually test what I'm about when I play video games. I don't know if that's just me, but whatever. Uh, but as someone who's never cheated ever, in, in any video game ever, to see the the series in this state with the amount of cheating that goes on. I don't even really cover this because I have to cover so much other random bullshit that just happens. We're to a point where my love for FPS is just in the gutter. I, I seriously just need to go play some single player FPSs or something. I, I need to revisit Black Mesa, which is a remake of Half-Life 1 if you guys haven't heard of it. Uh, Half-Life 1 was my very first FPS I ever beat. I beat Half-Life 1 way back in the day when I was like 12 years old on my uh, 2001 Compact Presario PC. Probably played that shit at like 20 FPS, man. Just, I don't know, the original OG Half-Life. I remember getting the box set with like Counter-Strike and Half-Life Blue Shift and all that stuff, all the DLC packs and whatnot. And um, I beat that just, you know, at 12 years old without hand-holding, without any real help. I just eventually beat it and it was one of the best, still to this day, one of the best one of the most memorable FPSs I've ever played, and ever since then I've been kind of hooked. And then, you know, Gears of War came out, Call of Duty 4 came out, Halo 3 came out, Halo 2 came out. And now we're here, and I'm just, I'm just, I, I don't like it. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry for constantly being negative on this channel, but please give me something to be positive about. And it's clear that I'm not just speaking into the void. I, I checked my views and I compared my views to someone like, uh, as an example, Swag, Face Swag. Somebody, somebody who's really, really positive and just constantly making Warzone videos and whatnot. And, like, my views are equal to a guy with a channel with 3 million subscribers posting about Warzone and just talking about loadouts and all that stuff. It's comparable right now. Should it be? Most people just cannot get any traction when it comes to Call of Duty view-wise. And, like, if, if the series keeps going this direction, man, it's going to get worse for even the big content creators. People are going to get sick of it. We need a good game. Straight up. Guys, I'm out of time. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Need some parting advice?